came across these uh, tubes. These are indicator tubes called uh, Decatrons. They're quite old, uh, date from the 50s and 60s. Uh, they basically got uh, an, uh, a neon fill of gas and all these little connections. But it was only for years and years I knew of them. But only recently can I give it a, th a thought that how many pins are in there? About 30 pins uh, inside this uh, tube, and there's only eight pins on the base. So, um, how do they do that? Well, it seems to be it's done by phase. So we've got a high voltage applied to light one pin and then we have phase on two pins to shift it from one to the next one. So you can actually get it to do a circular motion. It's also possible to reset it into one position as well. So you can reset the counter as it were. Quite a cool thing, this is running with 50 hertz on the mains so that it's synchronized to that. Um, but the big problem was I was working from a circuit diagram, uh, in fact, oops, this one, uh, and there was an issue with it. If the voltage on the anode slumps, as I can demonstrate, because I've got it on another power supply here and you can hear the, the noise in the background, but as the anode voltage is quite critical, if I, if I drop that down, eventually you'll see some pins stop lighting and it gets a little bit erratic. So given this is circuit and wired up on the back of the, 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 the tube base, the, uh, the only thing that was different, this, this particular type of tube wasn't one that I had seen anywhere else, so it could be that the specification for this is slightly different. Um, but both of these behaved exactly the same way that they, they didn't seem to work sporadically with the, this particular circuit. Uh, these tubes look like they've had quite a bit of use. This kind of silvering here is from basically the evaporation or sputtering of the metal pins in there. Um, so, but even saying that, I thought it would have worked a little bit easier. Anyway. And you switch on the anode voltage, you should be able to light a single pin, as you see here. It is kind of random what will light. Every third pin is, is common, but one will randomly start. But because there's no ionization occurred around this center pin, the, uh, it's easy to move the discharge either left or right depending on how you vary the voltage on the next pin but it can't initiate anywhere else because this charge has occurred here uh, and it makes use of this technique to uh, allow the this rotational uh, behavior without without all the connections being available to the pins you can just see uh, the center pin here glowing and a faint glow around discharge around the other two pins are connecting a supply to either side of these pins can clock it one way or the other. It's a really, uh, really clever little device. So there are other counting devices from the past. This is the even rarer uh, electron counting device. This one works like a, a small cathode ray tube. With these, this is a fluorescent screen under the, the digits basically and the beam can be pointed to basically fluoresce the screen uh, and indicate the number. Slightly more complex device to wire up.